Letter number 118 by Augustine. A short text and an early text, and a very good introduction to Augustinian ethics, as well as an interesting and helpful commentary on the, uh, the ethics of pre-Augustinian philosophy, the ethics of Epicureanism, Stoicism, and Platonism. The letter is written to Dioscorus, and the occasion of the letter is this. Dioscorus had written to Augustine, asking him some questions about how to interpret some of Cicero's dialogues. And Augustine was not pleased. He thought this was not the sort of thing you should be bothering a bishop about. Also, more importantly, he thought that Dioscorus had a bad motive. Dioscorus was motivated by pride. He wanted to show off his knowledge of Cicero. He wanted the praise of man. And Augustine explains that this is not a good reason to study Cicero. Also, Cicero is just not that important. What's really important is uh, the truths of the faith. Now, that's not to say Cicero is useless or unimportant. And if you study this dialogue, uh, this letter, you might find that Augustine not only worked long and hard on the letter, unlike our uh, two-minute emails we send off these days, Augustine worked hard to give him a proper understanding of these pagan philosophers he'd been studying. Probably, you will find at least some answers to Dioscorus' own questions about how to interpret Cicero. Although Augustine uh, de-emphasizes this and emphasizes rather the spiritual and pastoral care, the care of Dioscorus' soul, the conversion of his mind and the conversion of his desires, the conversion of his heart to the love of God. So he thought Dioscorus wanted to be praised by men. And he says that this is a prideful motive and that pride is is a poor foundation on which to build happiness. Augustine explains that we need a firm and immutable good on which to build happiness. Now, all of this uh, critique of the pursuit of pagan philosophy from a bishop is so beautifully nuanced, because even as he says this, even as he says Cicero is not all that important compared to the truths of the Christian faith, Augustine will tell Dioscorus how well the philosophers understood this. If we want a stable happiness, we need a stable object of desire. Happiness requires satisfied desire. It requires that we not have unsatisfied desire. Dissatisfaction is inconsistent with happiness. And Cicero, of course, understood this, although sometimes he did not act like it. More on that in other videos on this channel. Now, what these philosophers understood was that we need to find the right object of desire, we need to find the right location of happiness. And Augustine gives us this delightful little ascent through ancient philosophy and up towards Christian theology. The Epicureans located happiness in the body. They thought the basic form of happiness is physical pleasures. But the Stoics did better. They located happiness in the soul. They thought happiness is a spiritual thing, a psychological thing. They thought that the true good is not the pleasures of the body, but virtue in the soul. And they did better than the Epicureans, but they still failed. The Platonists located happiness above the soul. They located it in higher, immaterial, non-physical reality. Ultimately, they located happiness in God, and very properly so. However, they in their pride did not understand the right way to get to God. The right way to get to God is not um, platonic reflection. It's not the power of our own intellect or the power of our own virtue, nor these two things combined. The right way to get to God is humility. It's the way of following Christ. That's the way to get to God. That's the way to be happy. Interestingly, even while we have this critique of pagan philosophy and uh, a critique of the importance with which some people, the importance some people attach to the study of people like Cicero, Augustine is still giving Dioscorus this great uh, compliment of treating him to this uh, intellectual, spiritual feast. Uh, he's giving him an analysis he doesn't give to just anyone. In Book 19 of The City of God, Augustine will also analyze pagan philosophy, but he won't explain what the Platonists got right. I think what, he, what he's doing differently is primarily responding to his audience. When he's writing The City of God, He's a bishop writing to a very large audience, including quite a few who could never understand the first thing about Plato. When he's writing to Dioscorus, he's writing to someone who has studied the philosophers and can't understand this. So for the broader, more popular audience in City of God, he gives them a less detailed treatment of what the Platonists in particular got right. He gives them a less detailed treatment of 
the insights you can actually find in the philosophers. In Dioscorus, in the letter to Dioscorus, number 118, because Dioscorus had studied these philosophers and was able to understand the first thing about Plato. He gives him this insight, uh, attributing it to the philosophers. But of course, always, always, as you would expect from Augustine, treating Christian theology as uh, superseding the intellects of the philosophers. They got some things right. And the Platonists in particular understood the non-physicality of God and of the soul, and this is helpful to understand many problems, but they did not have the way of following Christ. They did not have the humility to seek happiness, not by depending on anything of their own, but by following the Messiah, by turning to the grace of Christ the Messiah. This is the way Augustine recommends for Dioscorus and for us.